Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this is the rapid revision for the UGC NET Environmental Science Examination and this is the part 27 in this series. So this revision is called as 5 star concept revision because in which we will discuss 5 very frequently asked and important questions for the UGC NET entrance examination. So without much delay, be ready with the pen and paper so that you can note down all these things. So let's get started. So if you haven't visited all the 26 videos on the rapid revision, you can visit the videos. The link is provided in the i button because it will be very very helpful in the examination and will boost your confidence. So the first important concept which we will be knowing today is the degradation of organic material through anaerobic digestion. So this question is one of the very frequent asked question. You should know what are the steps and which step is followed by which step. So first, this is actually the degradation of organic material through anaerobic digestion where the oxygen is not used. So first step is hydrolysis, second is acidogenesis, third is acetogenesis, fourth is methanogenesis. So questions come that you have to arrange the step and stages in the anaerobic digestion. So first hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis and finally the methanogenesis. So we'll know one by one. So organic material are carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. So when they undergo hydrolysis, breakage of water, that bond is breakage. So that is called as hydrolysis. Lysis means breakage. So it yields what? It yields sugar, amino acids and long chain fatty acids. So in first step, we get all these things. You should note down. Second step is acidogenesis. So acid, acidogenesis means acid will be formed. What kind of acid? VFA. So that means volatile fatty acids are formed in this stage. And what will be formed? So the bases are propionate and butyrate. These two are the important volatile fatty acids formed in the process of acidogenesis. That is the second stage of anaerobic digestion. Coming to the third step, acetogenesis. Acetogenesis means acetic acid will be formed, so synthesized. So in this stage what happens is acetic acid is formed along with that hydrogen and carbon dioxide are also released. So these two things you should note down and final step is the methanogenesis. Methane यहाँ पे form होता है, methane का production होता है final stage में. So here methane along with the carbon dioxide it is released in the final stage of anaerobic digestion of organic material. So this chart you have to make and this four step you have to learn. So I hope you have noted down. If you haven't, you can pause the video and note down. So next thing is from the environmental impact assessment category of projects. So projects, you should know this is also very, very important concept. So environmental impact assessment notification of 2006 has decentralized the environmental clearance project by categorizing the developmental projects into two categories. What are the categories you should know? One is category A projects. One are category B projects. So category A projects, they need national level appraisal. But category B project, they need state level appraisal. So these things are important. Note down kindly. I have mentioned in the point wise, which will be helpful for you. Coming to the next point, category A projects are appraised at national level, as we learn now, by impact assessment agency. The short form is IAA and the expert appraisal committee, that is EAC. So these two committee are appraising the category A projects under the environmental impact assessment. But category B is appraised by whom? It is appraised at the state level by the state level environment impact assessment authority that is SEIAA. So also the full forms are also asked in the examination. So you should remember this thing SEIAA along with that state level expert appraisal committee that is SEAC. So these two are responsible for appraising the category B projects and for the clearance of category B process or projects. Next thing is very important. So guys, before going ahead, let me remind about the four mock test series for the UGC NET Environmental Science 2022 examination, which will consist of 400 questions and give you a solid revision for the examination. You just need to follow two steps. First, you have to pay a nominal amount of rupees 99 through Google Pay or Phone Pay to this number 88950035690. Then send me the screenshot of this payment and I will provide you the links which you can attempt at your any convenient time. After 2006 amendment, the EIA cycle comprises of four stages. So they are what? They are screening stage, first stage, scoping is the second stage, 
public hearing is the third stage and fourth is the appraisal stage and appraisal we have learned now category a by national level and category b projects by state level these four things you should remember what comes after what this is also important coming to the next page for this category wise project of eia so here category a projects require mandatory environmental clearance and thus they do not undergo the screening process this is a very very important process they don't go under the screening process they require mandatory environmental clearance what are they they are category a category b projects undergo screening process and they are classified into two types so category b ka two types hota hai you all know if you don't know you can write down category b1 and category b2 category b1 projects mandatorily requires eia but category b2 do not require eia this is one of the frequently asked question we all know category b2 do not require eia category b1 they mandatorily require eia so here at last we can say that category a project and b1 project undergo the complete eia process whereas category b2 are excluded from the complete eia process these things are the summary for all this discussion i hope you have noted down let's move to the next important star concept next important thing is the composition of biogas natural gas and land fill gases so here the questions are asked that which is the maximum constituent from natural gas or biogas or landfill so you should know what is the maximum concentration and also you should learn second most important gas released during this process coming from the natural gas so natural gas methane is having the highest constituent that is 91% by volume whereas in biogas the maximum is also from the methane similarly in landfill gas also the methane is having the highest constituent that is 45 to 58% but you should know what other gases are also released from these natural gas biogas and landfill gases so ethane is the composition which is in the natural gas but it is not present in biogas or landfill gas you should note down similarly in the case of propane butane and pentane these are found in natural gas only not in biogas neither in biogas nor in landfill gases but here you should know that carbon dioxide is maximum present in the biogas as well as the landfill gases but here it is very least amount in the natural gas composition similarly you should know that volatile organic compounds very very harmful thing they are present in the landfill gases but it is equal to zero in case of natural and biogas similarly here you should know that hydrogen sulfide that gas is released approximately highest in the 500 parts per million in the biogas but it is in between 10 to 200 in landfill gas and natural gas is around 1 that is 1 parts per million similarly ammonia ammonia is released in the biogas case but not in case of natural or landfill gases but here finally if you come carbon monoxide it is released in the traces amount in the landfill gases but in biogas and natural gas it is closer to the zero value you can say so this table you should make natural gas biogas and landfill gas what are their constituents and which gas is present in which particular thing and which is not present in that so i hope you will note down this thing let's move to the next important concept next concept is coming from the statistic that is biostats portion in your syllabus this is about the error type type 1 and type 2 kind of error we will know this thing because it comes in the statement forms also so here type 1 error means when we reject the null hypothesis when it is true that means agar null hypothesis true hai still then we are rejecting it it will be called as type 1 error and type 2 error will be called when we are not rejecting when the null hypothesis is false so agar null hypothesis false hai aur hum usko accept kar rahe hain that is a kind of type 2 error so here probability of type 1 error when the null hypothesis is true is denoted by alpha you should note down and probability of type 2 error when the null hypothesis is false is called as beta is denoted as beta and probability when rejecting a false null hypothesis will be called as 1 minus beta this thing also note down don't know whether it will also come in the exam so here this is the table when the null hypothesis is true and we reject it will be called as type 1 error when the null hypothesis is false and when we fail to reject that it is called as type 2 error so this is the error thing from statistic very simple basic thing you have noted down let's move to the next important five star concept this thing is coming from the combined mean this formula this numerical is also one of the frequent last questions in the examination let us read the question first 
the question is saying if the mean of two groups of m and n observation that means there are two groups in which m is the number of observation of one group and n is the number of observation of the another group so it is telling the mean the mean of m group is 40 and n group is 60 and the combined mean of two group is given as 48 and the question is asking the ratio between the m and n that means ratio between the number of observations in m group and n group so how to find it we have to use a brahmastra formula that is this thing this formula you should note down xc xc means what it is called as the combined mean combined mean formula is small m that is the number of items in the first set multiplied by xa xa means the mean of the first set so number of items in the first set multiplied by the mean of the first set plus number of item in the second set that is denoted as the n small n multiplied by xb that is the mean of the second set divided by m plus n m plus n means the number of items in the first set plus number of items in the second set so here we don't know how many items are there but we know this is the combined means and the mean of individual groups so from this formula we will be able to find out the ratio between the m is to n that is the ratio between the number of items in the first group and to the ratio of the number of items in the second group so here 48 is given as the combined mean we have to simply put the values and get the answer i have already did here you have to read this carefully so 48 is the combined mean is equal to m m means the number of observation of the first group multiplied by 40 that is the mean of the first group next is plus n n is what n is the number of items in the second group multiplied by the mean of the second group which is given here as 60 so it is already given 40 and 60 respectively for m and n group divided by m plus n that means m plus n means what number of items in the first set plus number of items in the second set but we don't know this thing we have to simply cross multiply this thing simple multiplication 48 multiplied by m plus n will give 48 m plus 48 n is equal to in the numerator 40 m plus 60 n so after solving this thing we will get as 8 m is equal to 12 n and the question is asking m is to n no need to find individually what is m what is n it is asking the ratio only ratio hame nikalna hai so m by n will be how much it will be 12 by 8 simple school level maths but if you don't able to understand you can ask me in the comment section i will help you to understand so m is to n ka ratio a jayega 3 is to 2 because 12 by 8 is equal to 3 is to 2. So in this way you can be able to find the combined mean if all these data are given. Even if all the data are given, if you have sufficient data you can use this formula and get the ratio of the two groups or observations when it is given. So these questions are also frequently asked. I hope you have noted down. If not then kindly note down this. So guys these were the 5 important 5 star concept for this video. I hope you have learned something new. If you like this, don't forget to like the video, subscribe the channel Jacklit for further updates and yes, you can also join our telegram group for regular quizzes and Instagram page for current affairs and short notes. All the links in the description. See you guys in our next video. Till then, keep smiling and believe in yourself.